let's just get started. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in to our uh, inaugural and first of many uh, live streams on different topics that are going to help you grow your personal brand and your business online. It doesn't matter what your industry, your niche is in. Uh, some of the topics that I'm going to, or some of the examples rather, that I'm going to be discussing today are kind of specific to the uh, healthcare, substance abuse, and psychology uh, field. Um, but uh, these tactics really apply to everything as well. So if you have any questions uh, throughout this live stream, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, and uh, my moderator uh, and co-worker and friend, Odie, is going to be filtering those questions to me. I'll be answering them uh, throughout. Uh, if they're relevant to what I'm talking about in that moment, I will answer them uh, right then. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to try and migrate them all to the end of this uh, webinar as well. Thanks so much for... Okay. Hi, Sonella. Thanks for tuning in. Isaac, Stacy, Odie, thank you all so much. All right, we got quite a few people in here. Let's just kickstart this live stream. So what we'll be talking about today. Uh, I want to start by talking about local listings. This is something that I think is really important to discuss because it's something that you can begin to uh, do and incorporate in your strategy immediately. Some of the other things that we're going to be talking about today uh, overall digital marketing and social media and video marketing strategies they take a little bit of time uh, but when you do them right um, they pay huge dividends but local listings is something that you should really prioritize in your business and pretty much immediately within days you'll start to see uh, some pretty great results uh, and increased results from that I'm going to be talking about YouTube, uh, my favorite platform currently uh, and has been for quite a while. We've been doing YouTube for about seven years uh, and it's just a completely underutilized resource. Video marketing is not just the future, it's the now and you need to be doing it. And don't be scared about getting on camera because it's, it's not that scary. Uh, Instagram marketing, uh, it works incredibly well with, with local targeting, so we're going to get into some of that. Uh, Facebook, of course, because it's the king of social media and another great way to locally target people. Uh, and then, of course, LinkedIn, which if you're in the business-to-business -business space where you really have honed in on who your uh, target audience is, your target uh, consumer LinkedIn should be mandatory in your business outreach and business marketing as well so again for anybody that's just tuning in feel free to ask any questions that you have throughout thank you for tuning in and let's keep going so who am I exactly uh, my name is Austin Armstrong uh, I've been a digital marketer for about 14 years now I started back on uh, on MySpace. Uh, if anyone remembers that platform, I've literally been doing this for half of my life, uh, which is pretty crazy to think about, uh, but it's, uh, it's truly a blessing to do uh, what I love to do every single day. I'm currently the uh, CEO, project manager, and co-founder of this company, uh, Socialty Pro. Uh, and I've helped produce for both past companies that I've worked for, as well as clients, as well as for me personally, over 800 videos. Uh, I've worked with clients in many different industries, such as the addiction treatment space, psychologists, therapists, uh, mortgage brokers, relationship coaches, authors, uh, political commentators, you name it. Uh, I've probably worked with them. And if I haven't worked with them yet, I want to. Uh, because these strategies um, really just work across the field because uh, we know exactly how to target that, uh, those, those clients and, uh, and what type of content uh, to create around it. Our mission here at Socialty Pro is, is simple. It's to completely remove the painful aspect of digital marketing for you and make it a fun priority so that you can focus specifically on what it is that you love to do, that you've spent years focusing on uh, to train yourself and be that expert and let us take care of the rest. So now I'm going to be talking about the very long history of digital marketing 
and why it's so important. Just kidding. Uh, we don't have time for that. You don't have time for that. Uh, you're here for specific strategies, so let's get right into it. So local listings, what does that mean? A local business listing is an online entry that contains your business name, your address, your phone number, along with a lot of other details like your hours of operation, uh, your services, things that you do. Um, it, the importance of this is that people use these listing sites every single day to find businesses and services just like yours. And you've probably used a lot of these personally as well. So uh, Yelp, Google Business, uh, Bing, Foursquare, even Facebook. Uh, there's tons of these that people are actively looking for uh, your industry. Those are just the, uh, the top ones. There's also industry specific ones as well. So uh, for this example, if you're in the addiction treatment space uh, or you're a psychologist or a mental health professional, you definitely wanna get your listing up on psychologytoday.com uh, and for treatment centers, you absolutely wanna get on uh, samsha.gov as well. Uh, if you're in a different industry from this, uh, you can just do a Google search for uh, free uh, whatever your industry is listing site and it should pop up with with quite a few sometimes people even have blog articles that index a list of uh, of you know 20 30 um, listing sites for that but uh, in the time being uh, mark this website down I put this on here for you uh, directorybug.com slash top 100 uh, this is a list of 100 listing sites that you can add your business onto for increased traffic. So why, let's talk about why listings are so important. So uh, in this first screenshot here in the addiction treatment space, uh, this, is a, this is an extremely uh, popular and uh, unfortunately popular uh, and competitive space. So what happens here is if you do a Google search for your industry. So addiction treatment in this example. So I have this little uh, keyword tool under here that shows you the volume of searches per month. So addiction treatment gets 13,000 searches per month. The first thing that you see uh, after Googling that is the ads section. But then direct, directly below that you see the map. And this is uh, an index of businesses that fit what you're looking for in your surrounding area. So whether you're looking on a computer at home or on your cell phone or laptop or tablet, uh, it, Google knows where you are in the world. So it wants to serve you the best results uh, for where you are currently located. Uh, so this is a great way you have to, this is a Google business listing right here. Uh, and you wanna focus on getting more uh, reviews on there. Uh, the more reviews and the more positive the reviews you have, it boosts you up in those rankings and then you get more visibility. Uh, on this example to the right here, uh, I'm also working with a mortgage broker client. Um, this is an even more popular field apparently at 74,000 searches per month. Uh, but I wanted to screenshot this as well because uh, below the map section, what's the top result, the top organic result is Yelp. Uh, Yelp's has, Yelp has an amazing authority on Google uh, for, for local businesses in just about every single industry as well. So this is a, another amazing, and as you can see in the uh, URL here that it knows that I'm in Durham, North Carolina, which is where I'm uh, based and live streaming this from. So it's showing you the best uh, 10 mortgage brokers in my area. So let's talk about some strategies to get more reviews on your local listings. Firstly, and this is this should be a given, but you know maybe you don't always think about this, is make it known that you're actually on those platforms. Uh, post a Yelp link on the, the bottom of your website, uh, in the bottom of your email newsletter. They even uh, have stickers that you can put in, uh, in your window on your front office. Uh, you can have little stand-up banners. You know, people love us on Yelp. Uh, just put it out there. Get it known that you're actually on these platforms so that people can that have great experiences uh, can come on to your profile and give you a positive rating. This example is, uh, is uh, specific to the addiction treatment center space. Um, 
this should be a, a top priority for you. Uh, and what you can do is you can ask your case managers uh, to ask clients for reviews during that discharge period. So as they're leaving, um, as they're leaving your center, or and you can play around with this even if they're stepping down in, in level of care as well. Uh, just work it into your your system whether you ask certain uh, questions during the discharge process or um, or get additional information for them for uh, lasting support. Um, ask them for reviews at that time. Um, make this mandatory because. Uh, this is this is really powerful and this is going to help you dramatically over time. Uh, another power tip here is uh, ask the parents uh, for reviews as well. <clears throat> so the parents are often the decision makers that send people, um, uh, send their, their children to, to treatment centers to get help and if you successfully change and save their child's life uh, they're going to be in debt to you. So not only can you ask the, the clients for a review, but you can also ask their parents as well, and now you've doubled your amount of potential reviews. Uh, start with one platform at a time. I recommend this, uh, and don't ask every person to write, every, uh, write a review on every single platform, because the more you ask them, uh, the less they're likely to do it. So don't say, hey, Johnny, would you write us a, a Yelp review, a Google review, a Bing review, a Foursquare review, a Facebook review, uh, a whitepages.com, a yellow pages. No, stick with one. Uh, focus on one a month. You know, maybe this month, uh, the rest of July, focus on Google. Uh, send, you know, everybody that you talk to, ask them to write your review on Google. And then next month in August, uh, have them write reviews on Yelp. Uh, and then go to a different platform and do it this way. Do it very strategically so that they're more likely to actually write those reviews. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this is uh, controversial, um, maybe not recommended. Play around with this a little bit, uh, but I want to throw it out there. Uh, it's a little black hat, uh, but you can ask uh, your staff, you can ask friends, and you can ask family members to write positive reviews for you to give you a little bit of a boost. Uh, just make sure that uh, Google and Yelp uh, don't know that uh, it's it's uh, it's people that work for you or connected to you um, that are writing those reviews because they don't like that. Uh, so don't do that. Um, uh, do it very very strategically. But it's a great way to uh, to kind of seed those reviews and help you out. All right, let's move on to YouTube marketing, my favorite platform. So YouTube is the second most popular search engine in the world, next to, guess who it is? Google, and what does that mean? Well, Google owns YouTube, and this is an awesome opportunity for you. Because Google owns YouTube, through creating really strategic content, Google likes to index YouTube videos right in the search results. So this is an example, for instance, for uh, the treatment center that I work for, uh, I created a, uh, I analyzed this keyword, uh, what is LSD like, which gets 11,000 searches per month. We created a, a excellent, highly crafted video around this topic, and bam, as you can see, it ranks uh, second on Google for this search term that gets 11,000 searches per month, and then they click on this video, they watch it, and it goes to our call to action that we like. Uh, some other uh, amazing YouTube stats. Uh, YouTube has currently 1.3 billion users. Uh, it gets over 30 million visitors every single day. 9% of, uh, of US small businesses uh, use YouTube. Uh, this is a, a pretty interesting and exciting stat because 9% of all US businesses is not that um, overcrowded. Uh, so that sh says to me that it's an amazing opportunity for you to create content and not have that much competition in your space. I got these from uh, from this website merchdope.com slash YouTube dash stats uh, and there's a whole bunch of other really interesting facts on there as well. If anyone's just tuning in by the way and thank you for everybody that's still and currently watching 
uh, we're going over a lot of strategies about personal branding and uh, digital marketing tactics for uh, whatever your industry is. Um, so please feel free to ask any questions that you have in the comments below this video. I'll be answering them live. Let's keep going. So how can you succeed on YouTube? Let's get into a very brief, broad overview of this, but once you have this general understanding, sky's the limit. So you wanna start your channel with a, a goal in mind. Uh, do you want to use it for lead generation? Do you want to use it for sales or just improved brand awareness? It's important to come up with this and actually write it down so that you know that you can target that specific way and, and build out your channel around this one specific goal in mind. Because if you go too broad, you're just going to be all over the place and you're not going to have a strategic growth strategy. So, and then next you want to figure out exactly who your target audience is and cater your content to serving that viewer. Again, you don't want to go too broad. You want to target a specific individual based on what your channel's goal is. This is how you're going to have a lot of success. Next, you want to create a keyword strategy, and I'll explain a little bit more about how to do this and what this means, don't worry, uh, for your channel and stick with it. I suggest a keyword strategy uh, because this is a proven strategy on YouTube uh, for growth, and it's not, don't rely on, on the, the, the viral video uh, to pick up because that's extremely unlikely to happen. Uh, rather, go about it in a strategic fashion that is proven to work. <clears throat> Uh, when you record your videos, you want to base them on that keyword that you analyze uh, after you know what your topic is, not before. So you don't want to shoot the video on a general topic uh, and then try and optimize it around uh, a keyword that you find afterwards. You want to know exactly uh, what topic uh, you're covering first and then create a video answering that specific search phrase. Uh, and you want to create and focus on custom thumbnails for increased views. Uh, this is really important. Uh, this is an important aspect because not only do you need to create good quality content that people watch, people are looking for, um, and, uh, and good watch time for that, but you have to actually uh, have them click on your video in the first place. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Don't uh, just let YouTube auto choose a, a still frame uh, from your video, it's oftentimes, you know, random motion or, or a blurry face or a stupid face or something like that. Um, do a little research on, uh, on what thumbnails are currently ranking in the top um, several spots for that keyword and see how you can kind of improve on it, do it a little bit better even, uh, uh, play around with color psychology if you can. Um, to increase that click-through rate because it's just going to generate more uh, views for you. Uh, this is another great strategy. Uh, you want to link one video to the next video by telling the viewer what to watch. So let me break this down a little bit. So you just created an awesome video, you got them to click on your video, you got them to the end of your video, you've earned their viewership, you don't want to let them leave. You want them to continue watching your content. So we have to ingrain in our brains to avoid language like, uh, so to wrap up, or uh, once again, or thanks for tuning in, or see you next time. These are all negative psychological signals to the viewer that, okay, I'm done. I'm going to go on to the next thing. Rather, when you're ending that video topic, continue it uh, and say, you know, hey, uh, let's, let's roll with an exact example here. So, so if, if I create a video on um, uh, uh, drug detox symptoms, let's go with that. Uh, I got the viewer to watch the video, they get to the end of the viewer, uh, the end of the, the video. Uh, now I wanna say, uh, now that you know what uh, drug detox uh, symptoms are like, you're going to want to know the withdrawal timeline so you know exactly what to expect. Click on this video and physically point, okay? Physically point up here. Click on this video and I'll tell you what you can expect there. This is a, a, a statistical and numbers game. It's just going to increase the amount 
of, um, of people that actually click on that video and jump in. Uh, you want to do this for every single video. Don't let them leave. Don't give them any example or uh, don't give them any opportunity to actually leave. Uh, just keep them in your little feedback loop. Uh, that's how massive growth happens. And then you want to just analyze results, continuously analyze uh, and figure out how you can improve. So for anyone just tuning in, thank you again. Uh, let me know if you have any questions that I can answer on any of these uh, questions or topics. I would be happy to answer them. Okay, Sonella, let me look here. Uh, what, what's that directory bug site, please? Uh, Sonella, I will uh, comment with that link for you after the live stream's over. I'll get that to you, don't worry. Uh, so how to get consistent views from search. So this is a screenshot I just took of a channel we're currently growing in the addiction treatment space. We've been working with this client for three months. Uh, and you tell me any trajectory uh, graph that looks like this is, is pretty solid, right? Uh, this is going to pay massive dividends over time. This is, you know, we started in uh, uh, you know, uh, right at the beginning of April. Uh, and this is just focused on search uh, search results. So uh, we've had about 17,000 impressions, which are generated in about 2,600 uh, views. Uh, and that click-through rate uh, is so important as well. So 11% click-through rate, that's from creating custom thumbnails. These are all stats that you want to, uh, to focus on. So keyword research involves the process of finding exact words and phrases that your clients are looking for consistently. So I highly, in order to do this really, I highly recommend using tools like Keywords Everywhere, VidIQ, and TubeBuddy. Uh, they all have free options. Uh, you can, uh, they're Google Chrome extension tools. And what this does is it shows you the amount of uh, search volume uh, and the competition on there. So my exact keyword strategy that I use uh, for both myself and all the clients that we work for is I use uh, Keywords Everywhere and TubeBuddy. I use vidIQ a little bit less, but Keywords Everywhere uh, shows you the, um, the exact amount of search volume for a particular term. Uh, so you can know exactly how uh, many people are looking for that. And then TubeBuddy has a really nifty feature that shows you the um, uh, ranking ability out of, uh, out of 100. So uh, for instance, you might find a, a, a keyword term that uh, gets 1,000 searches per month, and TubeBuddy gives that a score of 80 out of 100, uh, which means that there's a good amount of search volume and low competition, so it's a good opportunity for me to create a video on that and rank for that term. Um, so you wanna find keywords that have significant volume based on your industry and, and with low competition. So really a good starting point. And thank you, Odie, for, for linking that. Um, um. Hey, Rick, thanks for tuning in. Uh, and thank you, Odie, for linking uh, those resources below. Um, so start with frequently asked questions, you know. Uh, what questions do you get in, in your industry? What do you commonly get? Uh, you can just take this knowledge and create videos around them uh, because chances are that more people are gonna be looking for that. You wanna make your videos a clear and concise answer to this search query. Get to the point. Uh, YouTube's a search engine. Um, it's also a social media platform, but first and foremost, it is a search engine. And like I said earlier, it's the second most popular search engine. People want answers to those questions. They don't want to hear your life story, uh, how you got to that point. They don't want to see a minute long intro, montage of all of this stuff. Get to the point. Say, hi, I'm Austin Armstrong with Socialty Pro. Today we're talking about how to grow your personal brand on digital marketing. Let's jump into it. Uh, open every video up similar to that for, for your industry. Uh, and a, a quick power tip here. Um, you can create blog articles around all of these keywords as well. Uh, and then what this works in a synergistic approach because Google owns YouTube, uh, YouTube uh, embeds in Google and they, they work synergistically. So if you create a really nice blog article around this, it's going to uh, index, on you, or index on the search results of Google. You can embed your video from YouTube 
in that blog article and it's going to drive additional views to that video and then vice versa on YouTube as well. People that are uh, are looking for the video uh, that you created there uh, in the description, you can drive them uh, to that blog article as well to get them on their website if they'd like more information. Okay, let's move on to Instagram marketing. Does anyone have any questions about YouTube uh, before I begin Instagram? No? Sounds good? Let's keep rolling. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so now I don't quite understand TubeBuddy. Can you share some more info on it, please? Uh, yes, absolutely. So TubeBuddy is a Google Chrome extension tool. You can go there, uh, TubeBuddy.com. Uh, you sign in with your account. They have a free option. They have some paid options as well. And it just unlocks a ton of, of different features specifically for your YouTube account. So you can do keyword research uh, on there. Um, you can find uh, competitor videos. Uh, and some of the paid options actually allow you to a, B, split test, thumbnails, uh, and it gives you a bunch of best practices and there's a whole bunch of awesome resources on there. I've been using TubeBuddy uh, for uh, about two years now and I love it. Let's see, Rick Gray, so you recommend hiring professional writers for blog posts? Uh, yes, unless you, uh, Rick, unless you consider yourself a writer and you want to, to tackle that, uh, there is a uh, kind of strategy around uh, SEO as well and kind of optimizing that written content so it has a better chance of showing up in the search results. If you want, uh, afterwards we can talk a little bit more about that uh, and how we can help you with that. Uh, but yeah, I kind of recommend hiring uh, our, an SEO writer for that. It's just going to help you have better results. Okay, let's get started with Instagram marketing. Keep the questions coming. Uh, I'll answer them at the end and throughout as well. So Instagram is a social networking app made for sharing photos and videos, primarily from a smartphone. Uh, it's similar to Facebook or Twitter. Uh, everyone who creates an Instagram account has a profile and a news feed. It's kind of a simplified version of, of Facebook. Uh, it has a very uh, strong emphasis on, on mobile use and it's very visually driven from uh, photos and videos. Thank you for linking uh, TubeBuddy in the description there. Sonella, you can uh, check that out if you'd like more information about it. So there are two types of accounts on Instagram, uh, personal and business accounts. The major differences between them is uh, personal is a little more simplistic uh, it just gives you the accounts and you can follow people and post and engage and all that fun stuff. Uh, but the business profile uh, actually gives you insight and analytics so you can figure out what type of content is working uh, so you can do uh, more of that. It also shows, uh, and I'm going to show you uh, some of the back end analytics that the business account gives. Um, but it also allows you to have. Uh, call to action buttons on here as well. So as you can see here, circled the call and the email button. So here's uh, some of the backend analytics. Um, the first uh, tab here is the uh, activity section. Uh, this is over a seven day period, as you can see. So I just took this screenshot the other day. Uh, it shows profile visits, uh, website clicks. It shows you the days of the week that are getting more, um, uh, more reach. Uh, and then the reach and the impressions. Reach is the total amount of different and unique accounts that you've reached, and then impressions is the total amount. So uh, if I saw your post uh, twice, that would be one reach, two impressions, for instance. Uh, the next tab over here, the content section, uh, you can sort this based on uh, however you'd like uh, an engagement here. So uh, you can set it to one year or one month or six months. Uh, and then whatever your call to action is. So in this screenshot here, I have all of the posts that gave me the most amount of website clicks over a one year period. So I can kind of see uh, which style uh, is working a little bit and I can see, you know, maybe I tweaked my call to action in that post a little bit and it generated uh, a much higher uh, click through rate uh, to my website. And you can kind of focus on that. Uh, if you wanna figure out 
um, how many, uh, which got the, the most engagement or the most uh, overall reach or the most follows. Uh, you can all find you can find that information in the content tab as well. And then lastly, the audience tab, self-explanatory, it tells you about your audience. Uh, at the very top, uh, it's it, I scrolled down a little bit more so I could show you this, but uh, it shows you how many new followers you've gotten over that seven day period. Uh, it also shows you the primary cities uh, as well as uh, the age demographics and gender demographics as well. So hashtags on Instagram. This uh, has been an amazing strategy that I've been continuously working on improving for many different industries. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, this single post uh, through using hashtags reached 53,000 accounts. Uh, now you tell me, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I'd, ra I'd you know, I'm happy reaching 53,000 accounts on one specific post. Uh, and just to highlight what some of these are, that first uh, heart is, uh, that means 3,500 people uh, liked it, 50 people left comments, 267 people shared it, 901 people saved this post, uh, 296 people visited my profile from this, it generated 12 website clicks, 58 uh, follows, and as you can see, all of the impressions, or 56,000 impressions, came specifically from hashtags. Let's see here. So if you have any questions, keep them coming. Let me know. It seems like Odie's typing something. But I'll keep going until that comes in. So hashtags, think of them as keywords uh, that are, uh, so it's a pound sign keyword. Uh, it indexes the content in this field. Uh, and are essentially search phrases. Uh, you can have up to 30 on any, any individual post, and I suggest playing around with that. Switch personal. Okay, Sanella, how do we switch a personal business account on IG? Uh, should we have both Instagrams? So you can only have uh, one at a time. Uh, or you can set up uh, two separate accounts if you really would like to, uh, but you can always switch your account back and forth between uh, personal and business at any time. Uh, let me just double check how to do this real quick. Let's do this in real time, I believe. Uh, so if you go to your profile on Instagram, if you're looking at your profile feed, you're gonna click on the uh, three, dot, or three lines in the upper right hand corner. Uh, you're going to click on settings down at the bottom and then uh, I believe there should be a button right there that says switch to a business account uh, and then it'll start giving you all those juicy analytics. Hope that answers your question. So steps to success. Start broad. Uh, start broad on whatever your industry is. Uh, in this example I have uh, hashtag addiction um, and then you can what what happens here is it indexes two different fields. So it'll show you the top posts as well as the most recent posts. So you wanna look at those top posts there. Uh, you wanna click on those top posts that use that hashtag um, and then look through the comments. Uh, you should see on most of them a large list of these hashtags. Uh, so what you can do is uh, steal these hashtags. They already did the research for you. And now you know what type of content works really well on that set of hashtags. Uh, so you can do exactly that. You know, copy them, uh, really focus and analyze what type of content is, is reaching that top post spot, uh, and then start creating similar content to that. Uh, and then before long, you'll be able to, uh, to reach massive amounts of people on this. Uh, some other growth uh, strategies for Instagram include uh, post frequent content. Uh, I recommend and Instagram recommends uh, two to three times per day. Uh, don't post uh, once and then wait four days and then post again and then maybe you know take the weekend off and then you know maybe Monday comes again and uh, and then post one more time. Try and stick to, to two or three per day. If you can only do one a day Start with that. Uh, you can also use some <clears throat> uh, scheduling softwares uh, like Hootsuite uh, is one that we use. I think Buffer is, a, is another great one. There's a ton of them out there that uh, you know you can spend you know one day a week or 
or one day a month, even if you want to go that crazy, just create a ton of content and then schedule it out for the entire month so you only have to do that uh, one day a week. It's entirely up to you and, and your, your work schedule. Uh, post stories frequently. Excuse me. Uh, so stories are uh, little ephemeral content that appears at the very top of the uh, Instagram feed. It's obviously the first thing that people see. Uh, you probably see them, those little bubbles at the top, so it's like a row of people's faces or icons' faces up there. Those are stories. Uh, and here's a game-changing thought. Uh, tell stories in the stories. People connect psychologically with storytelling. So you should tell that story. You know, whatever it is that you're trying to convey, tell it over the course of several different stories. This is how you're going to connect with people. And you can even include hashtags in your stories as well. This is a really cool uh, thing. And if you, you can keep doing this, you can, uh, uh, sometimes it, it, it lets you, sometimes it doesn't uh, because everybody's kind of fighting for that. But if you consistently post hashtags in your story, uh, you can index that story in those hashtags. And uh, that increases the amount of people that uh, will view it. Um, okay, in each post, tag yourself in a specific area, even if you are not there. The more specific and popular the location, the better. So to give you an exact example, I'm based here in Durham, North Carolina. I don't wanna tag my post in Durham, North Carolina, but what I do is I tag myself at Duke University all the time because I know there's a lot of uh, people there that are that are checking content. So people uh, follow and check in and engage and see what else is going on in these specific areas. Use this to your advantage. So for instance, if your business or uh, your office is, is located near maybe a, a, a shopping mall that's crazy uh, packed all the time or, or another, I don't know, whatever, or a college, uh, or anything like that, uh, tag yourself in that area, tag yourself that your post is there so that an, an increased amount of local people see your post, check out your profile, bam, you're growing your local audience. Uh, follow competitors, engage with people who comment on their posts. Um, this is just a great strategy in general because you can follow your competition. The people that are actively engaging with their content, uh, you can you know that they're active accounts, they're active people, so you can begin to uh, create conversation with them, ask them additional questions, uh, and nurture relationships that way. And then naturally engage with other people who tag themselves in the areas that are near you. So you can follow the locations of whatever your area is and uh, leave a comment on there like, hey, I saw you were in Durham, North Carolina today. Uh, I'd love to, you know, see if I can help you with this if you're interested, you know, let me know your thoughts. I don't know, loose example. Do something with that, play with that idea. Okay, Facebook marketing. Thank you all for tuning in and staying tuned in. If you have any additional questions about Instagram, keep them coming. We're gonna keep moving on here. I'm gonna answer them live, okay. So Facebook marketing. Uh, Facebook is the most popular social media platform on the planet. You need to have a business page on there or a personal brand page set up and be active on there yesterday. Uh, it is, you know, whatever your stance is on Facebook, whether you morally or agree or disagree with them, you don't necessarily need to use it personally but it's a great idea to get your business active on that platform so that you can you know, share updates, uh, regularly engage with your actual audience, uh, get reviews on there, post behind the scenes or things that are in the work, uh, and then bring them, you know, bring them over to your website. That's the ultimate goal, right? Get them to sign up for your email list. Um, so once you have your business page set up, you want to make sure you have it fully optimized and filled out. So some of the things that I have um, uh, circled here are uh, a cover photo or cover video uh, with a clear call to action. So you can see here, you know, this is what we're about. We want you to call this number so that we can help you. Include a story section. Uh, I put the mission statement in this uh, profile, uh, but you can just put a business overview or what you're about and who it is that you help. 
the services tab over here is also awesome. Uh, you can list all of your services, things that you offer, items that you sell, whatever it is right in there and then people can find that. Uh, and then if you're able to get that gray or coveted blue check mark, uh, I highly recommend doing that. That just means that Facebook has uh, verified your account and this is actually uh, you and actually a business. Uh, you have to do this through settings. You just have to send them some uh, documents that they require. There's a little bit of an approval process, uh, but then you can get that check mark. And it just kind of helps uh, your overall authority on Facebook, uh, as well as, as it looks good for people that are coming there. Uh, it says, you, you know, you took the time um, to make Facebook and a, an authority for your brand. So how exactly do we grow on Facebook? Put simply, post things that your audience or clients like and do it frequently. I'm going to blow your brains with, uh, with this right here that you probably don't know that you can do. Um, so check this out. So on your uh, business page, if you click on the Insights tab, and then scroll down to the bottom. Uh, they don't make this super well known, uh, but this is an amazing feature. So click on insights, scroll down to the bottom. There's this amazing section called pages to watch. And what you can do here is uh, add pages that um, are your direct competitors uh, that are doing really well. So you can see how they're doing. Uh, as you can see in this example here, I'm following, uh, I have a couple pages to watch of a couple different treatment centers and then websites like uh, The Fix and SAMHSA that are recovery oriented, that have pretty good reach. And then what happens is when you click on their names there, it pops this up, which is incredibly powerful. Uh, this show, this is this week's top posts from this uh, specific uh, from Cornerstone Recovery, for instance. And what this does is it indexes the content uh, from uh, most engaged to least engaged over this uh, week period uh, in chronological order. So it shows, or uh, in, yeah, in chronological order, uh, showing the most successful at the top. So now you know exactly what your competitors are posting and how it's doing online. So all you need to do is copy that strategy and do it a little bit better. And you're off to the races. Uh, some other Facebook uh, growth strategies include sharing into relevant groups. Uh, here's an example that I just did for our page, Socialty Pro. I just create these, uh, these images that are related to, you know, kind of motivational slash personal development, personal branding type of things. Well, I shared it into a motivational quotes page and this, uh, this post within this one uh, group, uh, 84 people liked it, 32 people uh, shared it onto their personal profiles. And currently this uh, single post has reached about 7,000 accounts and it got about uh, 20 to 25 uh, new people to like our Socialty Pro page. Uh, you can do this for any industry. Uh, so there's in the addiction treatment industry, for instance, there are tons of recovery oriented groups. Uh, there's also tons of local groups as well, uh, city, state. Um, so like in Irvine, California, there's tons of groups about Irvine moms. Uh, well, if, you're, if Irvine moms are your target demographic, join those groups and share your relevant content into those groups because now you're growing an, uh, a relevant audience. You want to live stream and answer questions frequently, just like this. Thank you all again for tuning into this live stream uh, and at the end, drive them to your website or whatever your call to action is. Live streaming is just an amazing way to actually engage with your audience. Uh, try to post frequently as well. Um, you know, I recommend two to three times per day. Really just post as frequently as you can. Uh, you want to stay top of mind. So the more people that engage with your profile, uh, they're going to see more of those posts, they're going to engage more, and that's how it grows. Share exciting scenes uh, from YouTube videos uh, and Facebook to tease the whole thing. So face YouTube is a direct competitor with Facebook, okay? Do not post YouTube links on Facebook. You can 
you can try to, it's going to significantly reach less people uh, in a direct post. What you can do instead is take a minute from that video, upload it directly to Facebook, and then you know, maybe in the comments of that video, uh, say if you'd like to watch the whole thing, uh, go over to YouTube and, and check it out here. You know, here's our link. Do it that way because you're going to reach a lot more people. Uh, and Facebook actually apparently punishes you if you post those YouTube links. So for instance, if you have great, uh, great engagement, great reach, great reach, and then you post a YouTube link, your reach is going to tank and then your next couple of posts your reach will go down as well, which is scary to think about. And this goes across every social media platform in general and really everything, if you have a website or an email or anything, respond to every single person, respond to every single comment. Uh, they took that time to comment on your post, take the time to respond to that because that's how you're going to build an audience and nurture that relationship. Okay, on to LinkedIn marketing. Uh, does anyone have any questions about Facebook, uh, Instagram, or YouTube before we get to that? Uh, if you do, leave us a comment uh, and Odie will get them to me and we'll, we'll answer them. So uh, let's keep going. All right. LinkedIn marketing. Okay, Rick Graves. Uh, what about Wistia videos? Do they work better on Facebook versus YouTube video links? That's a really interesting question. I haven't specifically tested uh, Wistia but uh, I would ask you why do you want to use Wistia? Um, not a lot of people use, it, 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 Wistia is cool uh, it, it, as it has different features and it's a, a customizable player that you can embed on your website. Uh, and if you don't want to specifically grow a YouTube uh, audience and you just want to have video content on your website you can use Wistia uh, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it if you're trying to reach and scale more people uh, but it's an option you can try it I don't currently have a Wistia account uh, but that would be an interesting experiment to try and see how it does so LinkedIn is the largest social media platform discussing business and industry related topics which is very exciting. It doesn't matter what your industry you're, you are in, uh, if you're trying to connect with other professionals, use LinkedIn as a part of your business development strategy because it is highly targeted, highly engaging. And uh, this is, yeah, I digress a little bit. LinkedIn has had a bad rep for so long. People just consider it a, a platform that's a digital portfolio uh, or a different way to get a job. Microsoft bought it two years ago and they've been doing so many changes on there. It's, it's amazing. It's had a, a, a complete resurgence. Uh, videos on there, live streaming is coming soon. Uh, it's really an exciting platform. Uh, Sonella asks, uh, ratio for Facebook page of biz related and other posts. I'm not okay. I think. Are you talking about a specific ratio of how much uh, content specifically for your business versus industry oriented uh, content? If that's the question that you're answering or you're asking, uh, I've always heard 80/20. Uh, so post 80% just general, engaging, interesting content uh, that people are are interested in, and then sneak in uh, about 20% of direct call to action content for years. Uh, I hope that answers your question if that's what you're talking about. Thank you all for the amazing questions, by the way. Keep them coming, I love it. I love interacting with you and I hope you're enjoying this live stream so far. Uh, you can find and target exact individuals or positions of companies or industries that you want to work with. This is amazing, all right. Business networking, your outreach, your business development people. You don't need to just cold call uh, companies or show up and knock on their door, you can kind of get them at, at a, a back-end approach through LinkedIn. And I'm going to show you a little bit about how to do this as well. LinkedIn is just simply an amazing platform uh, to grow your personal brand in a professional way. Okay, LinkedIn tips. Uh, firstly, you want to figure out what your plan is and what you want to get out of LinkedIn. Uh, so do you want to be hired by a company? 
Uh, do you want to sell your services to somebody? Do you want to network with a company to do business with them? Answer this question first so that you can cater your entire account uh, uh, around that. And there's, there's my cat making a little cameo. Get down. <laughs> okay, once you have all of that figured out, uh, you want to optimize and fill out all sections of your profile to fit exactly that goal. So when your target comes to your profile, uh, they think, wow, this person is perfect. Sanella is just the person that I am looking for. Sign me up. That's what we all want. Uh, so here's a little screenshot, for instance. So this is my headline on there, uh, Austin Armstrong, and directly below. Um, I help psychologists and treatment centers get more clients online via social media, video marketing, and content strategy. Uh, this is important because anybody, this is who I'm connecting with, is I'm connecting with psychologists and treatment centers and healthcare oriented people so that when they come to my profile, they know that I can help them. Uh, next, you want to use advanced search to start connecting with your perfect client. So let's kind of go in uh, to how to do this. Okay, so whoever you want to target, whoever you want to network with, for instance, uh, start uh, you put in their industry or job title up here. So I put in psychologist uh, as an example, and then uh, click on the all filters tab. Okay, uh, what all filters is going to pop up with is a bunch of uh, interesting uh, or more advanced targeting options on here. So. Uh, you can target their specific area. So as you can see here, Orange County, California, or now I'm targeting people in the Raleigh-Durham area as well. Uh, you can target them uh, based on their industry or past companies. So here's an awesome piece of advice uh, for um, addiction treatment centers. For instance, if you're trying to uh, network with a company that offers a really good insurance policy for all of their employees, uh, you can target maybe the HR department of, of that company and reach out to them and start building and nurturing that relationship. Okay, next, growing your connections. So once you've found your targets, you wanna start connecting with them. Uh, if they are out of your network, uh, which means that they're not connected with anyone that you're connected with, uh, you want to send them a, a note along with every uh, connection request and I highly suggest doing this anyway because um, you're just more likely to actually connect with that person and you want to add value uh, and say hello you don't want to immediately try and come across as salesy uh, or link to something immediately uh, because there's just so much crap on there you have to cut through the crap uh, and and get this person to actually think like hey I actually want to connect with you uh, and see what you're about. Uh, I recommend doing this about 50 to 100 times a day. Uh, you can just take you know, 10 minutes out of your time. You can copy and paste that same message, change the first name out, um, and, uh, and reach out to those people. Uh, there's also a, a, a great resource, uh, another Google Chrome extension tool called DuckSoup, D-U-X-Soup, um, that uh, attaches to, uh, to Google Chrome. And what this does is it actually automates this entire process. So you can reach out to and connect with all of these people uh, automatically and you don't need to physically do it. Pretty cool. Okay, once they accept your connection request, start engaging with them. Uh, ask them questions and messages. Uh, and if they post content, leave a meaningful response. In this screenshot over here, and this ties back to uh, why that headline is so important as well. Uh, this is a psychologist that I am connected with and that I'm engaging with. Uh, they posted a really uh, interesting um, post here, an image, uh, and I just, you know, leave a, leave a response. This is a really powerful quote. Thank you so much for the reminder. Add something along the lines of that. Uh, every time you post, um, your headline is a, or a portion of the headline is attached below it. So a psychologist sees that I left a comment on her post below my name. It says helping psychologists and treatment centers get more clients online. You know, two and two starts to go together. If she's interested in getting more clients, uh, she might check out my profile. And if my profile 
uh, matches what she's looking for, she might send me a message, uh, and you just keep doing this, keep doing this strategy. Additional ways to grow on LinkedIn uh, include uh, share interesting and relevant content frequently, uh, posts that are in your field or that are interesting and engaging and thought provoking and that cause uh, um, questions that you can uh, directly interact with them with. Uh, I suggest posting one to two times per day, so a little less. You don't need to be as crazy active uh, on LinkedIn as you do with Facebook and Instagram and some of these other platforms, uh, but I still suggest being consistent on there. Post videos of yourself. Uh, LinkedIn video is, is basically brand new. It's only about a year old. Uh, and they are really pushing it. The reach on videos on LinkedIn is absolutely amazing. Uh, and LinkedIn live streaming is currently in beta for, for several people. You can apply to that beta. I applied to that beta. I'm waiting to hear back, uh, but it's coming very soon for everyone on there as well. So that's very exciting. Uh, you can use hashtags uh, in each post uh, to help index your content and boost its reach. Um, similar to uh, uh, like Instagram, but you don't want to spam hashtags on LinkedIn. You want to focus with, with just a, a, a couple. And really hashtags on Instagram are in its infancy, uh, so they're a lot more general. Things like you know business or personal branding or uh, um, home loans or something along the lines of that. My cat's going crazy here, sorry about that. Uh, and then there's tons of uh, groups on LinkedIn as well that you can join other uh, uh, professionals and individuals just like yourself and you can begin to uh, engage with them on there. Okay, Sonella asks, what about plug LinkedIn helper? Uh, it's, oh, uh, so it's ducks, D-U-X. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you're asking, Sonella. My apologies. So it uh, it basically sends connection requests and messages on your behalf automatically. So you just it's like a a, a robot that just operates. So it, it goes to a person's profile. Uh, it sends a connection request. It sends an automatic message, and then it goes on to the next person. Hopefully that's what you're asking. If you're not, let me know. I'll be happy to. Uh, further explain that. Okay, so that's our live stream for today. I hope I overloaded your brain or at least got the, the wheels in there turning about different uh, strategies that you can begin to apply. Thank you so much for joining in today. I really appreciate it. I'm going to continue to do these. Uh, if you'd like to speak to me directly about how I can help you grow your brand or your business online, I would love to chat with you more in depth. You can email me directly at austin at socialtypro.com or you can call me at 888-382-10. Um, if you'd like me to send you this presentation so you can review it again, I would be happy to. Uh, just shoot me an email at that same email address. Say I'd like the presentation. I'll send you over the entire PowerPoint so that you can review it. If you're watching this after uh, the live stream that we're not live anymore, um, feel free to still let me know uh, what questions you have. I will respond to every single question. Uh, and if there's any uh, topics or general topics that you'd like me to discuss in a future live stream, please feel free to let me know. Thank you all again so much. It was a blast. Uh, any other questions while I'm still live on here? I'm going to hang out for, for just another minute. Let me know. Also, 4 p.m. on the dot. This is one hour. That was, that's pretty perfect timing, huh? Let's see. Any other questions? Keep them coming. Doesn't look like anything. All right, everyone. Thank you so much again. Thank you for tuning in. You are all Socialty Pros. 